Okay, good morning everyone. This is a quick tutorial to uh, show you how to make the radial symmetry needed uh, in your playing card self-portrait. So here on this layer, I have the top half of my card design. So I'm going to call it top half. All right. The first thing that I want to do is take this layer and duplicate it. So I'm going to right click and choose duplicate or you can use the keyboard shortcut control J. All right, this one I'm going to call bottom half and I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees. So if I go to edit, transform, they have the option to rotate 180 degrees. The other option is to press control T on your keyboard and right click on the image and tell it to rotate 180 degrees. So what I need to do is try to line up and I'm going to use my arrow keys on the keyboard to nudge these into place. And it's getting pretty close. I think I could live with that, but I'm not really keen on what's going on here in the middle. So I'm going to hit the check, and now I'm going to make a third layer, and I'm going to call it Paint Brush Gap because I am going to paint in between this area and try to make it blend a little more. So how this works is if you use the brush, B for the brush tool, you want to go to this little butterfly icon in the top area. Um, it's all the way on the right from the top menu. I'm going to ask for radial symmetry using simply two sections. So I'll type two into here and click OK. Now I'm presented with a straight line. I want to rotate this so that it's in line with what I have I'm going to zoom in a bit so I can see it. I want to make this go from blue to blue so that'll be nice and centered. Okay, and it looks like I got to adjust the rotation just a little bit. All right, that should work. So I'm just going to resize the box. I think I'll just make it stop at the end of the arm. Okay. And I will hit the check. Now, anytime, anytime I use the paintbrush tool, for instance, uh, let me expand my brushes. Right now, I don't have the right foreground color. Uh, this is what the armor is. And I, I could play with that, but I think I'd like to do some sort of kind of gap filling measure here using my um, color scheme. So I may start off with black. I'll press D to get the black color. And I'm going to adjust the size of my brush so that it kind of matches the lines that I already have in place. Now, anything that I paint here will be echoed on the other side. So if I want to make like some interesting designs, you can see those are being echoed on the other side. Okay. Anything that I decide to paint, if I want to have the snake kind of come down this way and pop back up, Go ahead and try to make it look like the snake is maybe bending over that area. All right. So if I hide my two halves, this is what I've created so far. All right. I'm going to go ahead and try to make sure it's sealed because I may want to like, echo the snake. So I'll use the paint bucket tool and I'm going to fill this in with the same color as the snake. Now my texture is not going to match, but for my purposes here, I just want it to be blue inside. Oops, got to tell it not to sample all layers. That way it'll just fill in the shapes. There we go. Uh, if I want to add other brushwork, it still remembers the last symmetry option. So maybe I will hold the Alt key down or press the I for the eyedropper and sample the yellow that I'm using. And I think I'll use a smaller brush. Just make some interesting design work here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit D and go back to what I had before with a black brush. I'm just going to do again some design work to try to fill the gaps. So uh, I've gone a little far here. I can hit the eraser and erase that on both sides. 
All right, so my hope is I can add some color to this. So I'm going to hit B for brush. Go ahead and bring this down, close the gap, bring this down, and close the gap, and then I'll paint bucket. So I'm going to press G for the paint bucket. I'll fill in, whoops, wrong color. I want that gold back. So I'll hold down the Alt key, sample with the eyedropper, put some gold here and here, and maybe I'll grab red or here and here. Let's turn that on and see how it's looking. All right, so the symmetry is coming along. If you realize that you don't like some part of what you've designed, I'm going to go ahead and erase. Maybe I don't like those little elements right now, and I want to add something else. So, B for brush. I'll hit D because I want to get back to a dark color. Again, if I hide my layers, you can see this is what I'm making. I'm going to go ahead and just make sure I fill the gap there because I want a paint bucket in. So I think it could use maybe a little more red. So I've got red in here. Let me go ahead and hit the Alt key. I'll sample the red from the shirt. G for the paint bucket. Fill in red on those pieces. And I don't know, maybe I'll leave white there. I haven't quite decided. But the symmetry is coming along and I'm doing a decent job plugging the gap. So I'm going to go back to my brush. Press D, and then I'm going to zoom in on here, and I think I'll just kind of create like a circular shape, like that. G for the paint bucket. I'm going to hit X to flip-flop my foreground and background colors when you hover over the uh, little double-sided curved arrow. You can see how that's working. Okay. I'll go ahead and fill in white on those as well. And that way, if I have a background of a different color, maybe I'll choose gray just so I can see if I have any gaps. And I have a few. It looks like my, um, it looks like the top part of the card and the bottom card part of the card could be a little bit more symmetrical. So what I'm going to do is just kind of, whoops, uh, undo. Let me switch back to the regular version of the rectangle marquee. I just want to make sure that my Rectangle, let me just nudge it over. I want my rectangle of white to be big enough to kind of cover what's going on here. So I'm just going to erase the gray from this section. You may not have to do this, yours may be solid. I just want to make sure that I have plenty of breathing room in case I need to have that when I take it over to the template. All right, one of the other things is I've realized that my, uh, my sword that I'm carrying, my little kingly sword, is not super symmetrical right now. Well, it's symmetrical, but it's being cut off. So I think what I'll do is I'll just kind of cap this. Whoops, wrong tool. B for brush. I'll go back to my paintbrush gap option. Painting with the wrong color. Of course, press D because I want to paint with black. Not the best circle I've ever drawn, so I'm going to take another run at that. And maybe if I zoom in, I'll have faith that the symmetry will, in fact, draw. So I'll go ahead and paint in kind of a pommel. Good. Another option you have would be to just use a really large black brush and then a really small. Hit X, change it to white brush. Okay. So then hopefully got my matching symmetry there like that. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in and see if I can't complete the scabbard on this sword. B for brush. Shrink it down. And for this I may want to use straight lines. So I'm going to click once. Whoops, wrong brush. Hit, uh, D so I get black and white. Alright. And that last one I didn't really enjoy that so I'm going to there we go, click that over. All right, maybe I'll hit the eraser, just clean up that edge just a little bit. Oops. And then I'm going to use the paint bucket again, and I'm going to fill in with the yellow color. So I'm going to hold the Alt key down so I get the eyedropper icon. 
And then this time I am going to tell it to sample all layers because I want to fill in the tips. All right. So there it looks like it's just ever so slightly off here. Okay. So I may resize this entire layer just a little bit. throwing my symmetry off too much. That's snapping to the point. I think if I zoom in, I'll be able to resize this a little more gracefully. So I'm seeing some gaps appear. I'm going to go ahead and stretch it out equally. Uh, you know what? Maybe I'll cancel this transformation. Maybe I want to do is take the bottom half and just nudge it over and nudge it down ever so slightly. I can take my top half, nudge it up, over or down. I just have to kind of fill that gap a little bit. So I think that's going to be a little bit better. I'm going to just zoom in on here. B for brush. Try to clean this. Whoops, wrong color. Clean this up. Make it look as seamless as I can. I'm going to hold shift and kind of click in a straight line back here. There we go. Let's see how that looks on the top. Super close. If I nudge the whole layer over, does that work? Yep, that seems to work. Okay, so I'm happy with my symmetry. I think I want to put a uh, bit of color in here. So I'm going to hit G for the paint bucket, Alt T to sample the color. So maybe I'll use this kind of muted gold color from the armor on the pommel. Maybe I'll change this section too. Although I don't know, kind of liked it before. Maybe I'll sample this color. There we go. So that's looking fun. I don't know what I want to put in here. Um, I may want to add some symbols. Like I haven't put any spades anywhere on the design yet, except for uh, at the top of the card. So let me go to my window shapes, and I want to load in the legacy shapes and more. So legacy shapes and more are all the default shapes that come with the program. Unfortunately, you have to look for them in the shapes window specifically. Um, but if I go down to, I think either the shapes or the ornaments, there we go. So I can drop a spade on here. Let's see, it's gonna come in with that color that I had. What if I hit D, does that change the color? Nope, all right, we'll add the spade on here. And if I grab the vector selection tool, then I can change the fill and stroke. So I'll go ahead and make the spade black with a blue outline, make the outline pretty thick, and I'll just type 20, I like that, and I'm going to ask the alignment to be on the outside, that way the stroke will appear surrounding the shape. All right, so I'm going to try to place one of these kind of symmetrically, so control T, shrink it down, Right, so what's happening, my stroke is not shrinking when I shrink it. Uh, that's throwing me off just a little bit. So bring this layer to the top. I've got to get rid of that stroke weight. So I'll just choose zero pixels. All right. So I think I'd like to have a spade on either side. So I'm going to do control T. Uh, nope, not ready for control T yet. I'll tell you why. I have to take this layer and duplicate it. So I'm going to duplicate the layer. All right. Control T, rotate it 180 degrees, and I will try to bring it down opposite where I was. Right. I'm a little bit distracted by the transformation box, but that's okay. So I've got my spade on either side. Oops kind of nudge them in place so that they look even 
to my eye. I think that looks pretty good. All right, I need something to fill the gap here, so I'm going to go back to my brush paint gap layer. And, nope, wrong color, D. I'm going to just create kind of a angular thing here, so I think maybe I'll draw out, whoop, draw, paint out with a small, is this brush firm? I want, yeah, 100% hardness. All right, so I'm going to paint this out and hold shift and just kind of click a straight line down here. Let's see what we got. I'm going to fill this in with some color. Uh, let me press G for my paint bucket. Maybe I will, whoops, uh, hold alt, sample the red, fill it in on both sides. Now let's see how the symmetry is looking. All right, kind of cool. I'm definitely going to save. All right, at this point, I kind of like what I have, so I think it's worth doing a quick save. I'll do export, quick export as PNG. Okay, Hatchel playing cards going right on my desktop. That's fine if you want to go to your H drive or your pictures folder, wherever you can find it, save it. Um, I'm going to keep working this, but I know that I have a version that I kind of like. So B for brush, D to get back to black and white. And I'm going to see about kind of filling in this section here. It's kind of reminiscent of a spade shape, pointed sideways. Um, maybe what I can do, let's take the spade, control J to duplicate, or right click and choose duplicate. All right, so we'll call it um, medium spade. And I'm going to transform this really big. I think that'll be fun to have a spade kind of hidden over near my uh, snakes. So I'm going to do a quick B for brush. Okay, on the paintbrush layer, I'm going to make a really big brush tool. So I want to encircle that. All right, and I'll shrink it down a little bit. Switch to white by hitting X paint that in. So now I have space for my spade. All right, so I'll go back to my medium spade, control T. Just kind of shrink that down a touch. All right, just need one on the other side, control J, to duplicate, or you can hold the alt key and click and drag. Control T to transform, rotate 180 degrees. I gotta just nudge that upward a little bit. All right, so I kind of like where this is going. I'm going to save it again, uh, and when I feel like I'm ready, I'll export the, uh, the whole thing. Now, if I go back to my brush tool, it still has the radial symmetry. So if I want to put something, uh, I don't know, maybe I'll make a selection around all the white. So it will only let me paint in the white sections. If I do B for brush, I can do like a large, ooh, maybe I'll do like a halo kind of thing. Make it look like I'm some sort of divinely inspired leader. Oops, painted on the wrong layer. Paint here. Oh, I'm painting with white. <laughs> Paint with black. D. I think I might be a little big, so shrink it in one, change to white. Maybe between seven and eight hundred. Maybe I need it to be like seven fifty. That way, when I click, I'll have a much thinner stroke. All right. So on this, I will hit G for my paint bucket. I'm going to grab this kind of golden color again. Fill it in there, and there, and there, and there. Boink. So I've made kind of a halo or a setting sun behind myself. And again, once you're working with the symmetry on the brush, you have a lot of things that you can do. I'm realizing also, I, it looks like the, uh, the eyes are hollow, okay? So I'm gonna click on here and I'm gonna just hit E for the eraser, and do a quick eraser so my eyes are, are white again, all right? Um, 